hi and welcome to Lucky Stones, I'm Chris and today I'm going to take you on a tour of Dinosaur Isle Museum on the Isle of Wight. Now this lovely looking building was uh, designed in the late 90s, early 2000s, I think it opened in about 2001 and um, the building is uh, meant to resemble a pterosaur. I think they've done a real, rather good job. So I'm going to go and pay to get in and I'll uh, show you around the exhibits. So the first exhibit we get to is Ice Age White and these are Pleistocene fossils about 10,000 years old and these have been found on the island. Uh, that is a large limb bone of a hippo and a hippo tooth. Uh, we've got a huge tusk here. Uh, we've got a bison skull, a huge bison skull there, a deer antler and a large rib. And we've got some Neolithic hand tools as well here. So we've got a hand axe and another hand axe there. That is rather superb, isn't it? Well, this next exhibit might be my favourite in the entire museum. Um, we'll get to exactly why in a minute. But uh, these are the fossils from the north end of the island where I love hunting. What we've got here is a whole carapace of a trionyx turtle. And we've got some other little pieces of emis, which is the other type of turtle you find. We've got a stunning crab in a nodule here. And that was found by uh, Theo, who's a friend of mine. And that was halfway between Boulder and Hampstead. Now that is absolutely stunning. Now this bone here, which is possibly why it's my favourite exhibit at the museum, this was found by me. And uh, yeah, this is a bird bone that I found at Thornest Bay probably about two years ago. And it is a fantastic example of a bird bone. It's the lower leg bone of a wading bird. And bird bones are incredibly rare in the fossil record because they're, uh, they're thin walled and, and almost hollow. Um, so they don't preserve very easily. So this is a, a fantastic example. So I'm absolutely dead proud to have this displayed in the museum. Now moving on, we've got the, um, the mammals that you can find. This is a guy called Bothriadon, sort of a pig bear dog. Um, they're Paleotheriums is the, um, is the group of uh, mammals that they come from. And what we've got here is the uh, both ends uh, of the upper jaw, which is rather exciting. And here we've got a fantastic example of a lower jaw, which is almost complete. Now that's absolutely stunning. And another jaw here. And I get very excited when I find bits of diplocynodon. Uh, so that's a very large scoot and a couple of teeth. And that is a jaw and a large vertebra. But these are the fossils from the north of the island. Um, they're mostly oligocene in age. And I absolutely love them. Now some of you might know that the Isle of Wight is famous for its coloured sands uh, down at Allen Bay. Well, there are some fossils there as well. Um, you can't hunt them anymore because they've closed the cliffs off. But the uh, sediments down at Allen Bay are the same age as down at Barton, sort of about 40 million years old. And you've got exactly the same sort of assemblage. Some absolutely wonderful gastropods. Really, really beautiful. So another thing you can find on the Isle of Wight is ammonites. And some of them are absolutely stunning. Really, really big ones. That's an Acanthosaurus. And this one over here is a Pachydiscus. And uh, these are found um, in the Atherfield clay uh, and also in the chalk. And that one there is a Calioceros. And that's what the ammonites are thought to look like in life. Fantastic models. 
Another kind of ammonite that you get on the Isle of Wight is uh, the heteromorph ammonites. And these are ones that have started to uncoil. And uh, these are absolutely gorgeous. That one there is a tropaeum, and uh, they're found um, down in the Atherfield clay uh, on the southwest of the island. Uh, they're really quite rare in this condition, hence it's uh, behind glass in a museum. But the, these heteromorphs are absolutely beautiful. So as I said at the beginning, the uh, design of the building is uh, designed to replicate the look of a pterosaur, and pterosaurs are indeed something that you can find on the Isle of Wight. They're very rare, uh, but they are known. And this is a guy called Colchicephalus, which means uh, chalk head. And that's a tooth of a pterosaur there. Uh, we've got some limb bones. Again, these are incredibly rarely preserved uh, because they're hollow, um, allowing the animal to fly. And not all of them are small. These are some limb bones of a much larger pterosaur. And we've got some more examples there. And we've got some pterosaur teeth and a nice model of one eating a fish. Now this fossil here is absolutely, well, this is bizarre. It's a shark's head and uh, incredibly, incredibly rare to be preserved. This must have been buried almost immediately after it died um, and therefore was not eaten or did not rot away at all. But yeah, you can see We've got the, uh, the little rows of teeth down there and round here, and uh, that's the rest of its head. And over here we have a vertebral column with some ribs and bits and pieces of a marine reptile, a pliosaur, called uh, Leptocloidus, and that's from Atherfield as well. Isn't that lovely? So I don't know if you saw this on the news a little while ago, but a new dinosaur has been found. It's, uh, it's called Brystoniensis simmonsi, um, and it is, it's an iguanodon-type dinosaur. It was found down near Brystone Bay by a gentleman called Mr. Simmons, and uh, hence its name Brystoniensis, so up, out of Brystone, and simmonsi from Simmons. And what we've got here is a huge limb bone and three wonderfully preserved vertebra. We've got a large rib there, and we've got some of its jaw there, and most of its lower jaw. Oh, and that is, that's spectacular. And then we've got a model of what a, we think it looked like in life. And yeah, this was found a couple of years ago. So even after nearly 200 years of finding dinosaurs on the Isle of Wight, we're still finding new stuff. So that was the corridor as you come in through the entrance and this is the main exhibit room. So I shall take you on a little tour of what they've got to offer. Hope you enjoy the sound effects, those are played all day. <laughs> so as you walk in, the first thing you're greeted with is this wonderful cast of Megalosaurus, which was one of the first dinosaurs ever described and ever discovered. Um, the lower jaw was found by um, William Buckland in uh, 1824. It was a large carnivorous dinosaur from the Middle Jurassic. I think it was found up in Oxfordshire somewhere. And uh, yeah, so they've made a replica of the entire skeleton, which is rather lovely. So what we've got here is a, um, a replica of the Barnes High sauropod, which is um, a huge, huge animal that was related to Brachiosaurus. And uh, it was found by uh, some University of Portsmouth students in uh, 1992. And about 30% of the skeleton was uh, collected. And that is, uh, the actual bones are on display at Dinosaur Farm, uh, which I tried to visit this morning, uh, but unfortunately it was closed. So this is a replica of the bones that were found. It was absolutely huge. And uh, as far as I know, it's the only sauropod that's been found on the Isle of Wight and it's called uh, Eucomeritus, which means well-chambered, but it's uh, yeah, a close related cousin of Brachiosaurus. So what we've got here is, um, it's a crocodile skeleton, that's the skull there, and this was found uh, at Sandown, so this is Cretaceous, and uh, it's called Goniophilus, and it was collected by, uh, by mostly by one gentleman um, over many, many visits across um, across one February and then other bits and pieces were found and this is the holotype 
Uh, this is the only one known from Sandown. And we've got almost all the skull, a load of the back, a load of ribs, a load of side scoots, got some teeth there, and uh, some rather large vertebra. So this would have been quite a beast. Yeah, so in this cabinet we've got uh, some uh, jaws and teeth. This is an iguanodon jaw, and this is a lower jaw of a much bigger iguanodon. And then we've got some individual teeth here. And moving on here, we've got some meat-eating teeth. These are near Veneta. We'll get to see a skeleton of that in a minute, which is the largest carnivorous dinosaur that's been found on the Isle of Wight. Uh, we have an Eotyrannus dentary, so that's part of the lower jaw. And uh, a Baryonyx, which is a, a Spinosaurid-type dinosaur. And those have been found on the island as well. And then we've got a couple of Spinosaur teeth from, uh, from Morocco just for context. And over in this cabinet here, we have some of the plants that have been found. So that's a, an early cycad or cycad. That is a really, really well-preserved leaf. And that's from the green sand. And then we've got uh, some conifers. And some tree ferns. rather randomly a bit of fossil poo. So we've got a huge model of an iguanodon here. It's probably about three meters high. These were very impressive beasts. But then over there, this has got a mixture of, sorry that made me jump. <laughs> we've got a mixture of real bones and uh, replica bones here. This is near Veneta. And this is the largest carnivorous dinosaur to be found on the Isle of Wight. And we've got quite a lot of the tail. So what they've done here is you've got the real bones and in between where the gaps are, they've made replica bones. And we've got the pelvis and then we've got the femur and the tibia. And we've got most of the foot here with uh, toe bones and a, and a claw, which is lovely. And that's uh, reconstructed in life pose. And we've got a couple of vertebrae there. Huge, huge dinosaur. Would not have liked to have uh, come across that. <laughs> and say, so, yeah, this is the largest one ever found on the island. Well, no self-respecting dinosaur museum would be complete without a replica skeleton of a Tyrannosaurus rex. And this is a juvenile. Some, some people sort of, there was a debate whether it was Nano Tyrannus and uh, T-Rex were different species or the same species. Seems to be resolved that Nanotyrannus is different, but this one is a juvenile of the original and best T-Rex. Now what we've got here is a small herbivorous dinosaur called Hypsilophodon. Uh, it's, it's a very old dinosaur, I think it was early 1900s when it was discovered and named. We've got, again, the replica filling in the gaps of where the real bones were. So we've got the uh, top of the femur and a bit of the pelvis. We've got some tail vertebra. And if we turn around here, I mean, that's a replica of the skull, but here's what they actually found. And that's the actual dinosaur skull of Hepsilophodon. And then we've got uh, part of the lower leg there, with a lot of things. And uh, we've got some more limb bones here. So I mentioned earlier that um, we're still finding new dinosaurs on the Isle of Wight. And uh, this skull here is a, a model of Spinosaurus. Now the reason this is here is because there have been two different types of Spinosaurid dinosaur found in the last three or four years on the Isle of Wight. We have uh, Ripper of Veneta, and we've got bits of the back end of the skull, the brain case, uh, we've got the eye, the orbit there, and we've got the, the upper jaw and the tip of the snout. Around here we've got the other one and it shows you what we've got there. Bits of the brain case and bits of the snout. And we've got another snout here and another brain case here. And this one's called uh, Ceratosucops. And these were both, as I say, both found within the last five years. So I'm afraid we're nearly finished, but uh, this is a model of Polycanthus, 
which is a, a spiny dinosaur, so you can see. And uh, these have also been found on the Isle of Wight. And what we've got here is a replica of the skull. And then we've got uh, one of the spines. And uh, again, some more of the scoots. And a vertebra. And the very final dinosaur that we have is an almost complete a guy called Valdosaurus, which reconstructed in life is assumed to have looked like this. And this is the most complete skeleton that's been found uh, of this particular dinosaur, I should qualify. And we've got uh, the whole tail, and we've got the chevrons there, lovely lower leg bones, and then the femur and the pelvis, and uh, the start of the back. And it was found in um, 12 blocks, and then carefully reconstructed, and then donated to the museum, which for something as beautiful as this, is, uh, is definitely the way to go. If I was ever lucky enough to find something as gorgeous as this, I would definitely, definitely donate it to the museum. Just going to show you a pan of the big room. Uh, behind the, the dinosaur models, we've got the lab where they do the preparation and uh, they're still preparing some more of the skeleton of the, uh, the Spinosaurids. Uh, but this is what's on display at the moment. There's so much to see and it's, uh, it's a lovely museum. The staff are brilliant. So I'm going to go spend some money in the gift shop now. I hope you've enjoyed the video. It's a little bit different from my normal videos, but I'll be back on my normal stuff tomorrow. We're going to Boldner. So if you've enjoyed it, like and subscribe and join me next time. Take care. Bye.